Hi guys, Bada Bing here. I've been looking forward to getting my paws on one of these for a while now. Let me introduce you to the GHK RPK gas blowback rifle, or should I say, gas blowback machine gun. So thanks for joining me today and let's do this. So the great thing about buying a new GHK AK, or one of the other many variants, is fresh out of the box it's a delight for not only your sight, but the sense of smell. You're welcome to buy a whiff of oil that GHK lightly applies to their rifles. It gives you a sense of AK authenticity that you really don't get in other airsoft guns. Delightful smell aside, you're also introduced to a finely crafted wood and steel blaster. LCT does a marvellous job on the externals. Although the AK top cover is a little rattly, but that only enhances its typical AK aesthetics. Other than the jingling top cover, the build quality is phenomenal. Sturdy solid and sexy. They must have reassessed their receiver mag well. The magazines lock into the gun without the need to rocket around to find its biting point unlike my AKM, so that's cool. We find the RPK wood furniture beautifully recreated. Chunkier foregrip and stumpy stock, complete with its built-in steel sling loop and steel stock plate with the usual compartment for the cleaning kit. Speaking of steel, the RPK has a lot of it. It might be just quicker to explain what parts aren't made of steel and wood. These parts include the hammer, sear, disconnector and bolt stop assembly. The trigger itself is made of steel though. To be fair to GHK's engines, they hold up pretty well and my 2012 AKM has only required a new hammer and auto sear in the four years of being blazing away with it. The RPK also features the heavy recoil kit which comprises of a steel gas piston, resulting in a heavier felt recoil. More on that in a bit. Accompanying the heavy bolt carry assembly, the rifle comes with a stiffer recoil spring. There isn't much to say about the bipod. It's your basic spring-assisted fold-out bipod with a retaining catch on the left leg, which wraps around the right when stored. The cleaning rod helps centre the bipod in line with the barrel, but under the weight of those legs, it tends to want to wander off to the right. The front sight post isn't the finest put together part of the rifle. The threads loosely grips the pin which winds itself in and intentionally when firing. I use some tape wrapped over the threads to sight tightly secure it. So we get down to the shooting. As you can imagine it's a great experience. If you fired off GHK's AKs you know the chatter of the working parts and decent fully auto performance. On a full tank it'll comfortably burn off the 40 round mag on auto with one trigger squeeze and with minimal slowdown or cooldown, if any actually. Of course propellant and temperature dependent. I can honestly say that I've shot this LMG 98% of the time on fully auto. Really the only thing slowing it down is the magazine capacity. At the time of filming GBL's prototype gas in mag drum is not available. Not much is known of it at this stage regarding its capacity or expected retail price, but you can find their video on Samoon's Facebook page. That's not to say there aren't other drum magazines available for the GHK system, just they tend to have hoses coming out the back of them. I just can't do it. HPAs aren't my thing. No disrespect to the many users of those setups, but in my eyes it's a step backward. Every time I see them I think of this and this. I digress. Shooting this on the prone is where it comes into its own, or any given moment when the bipod is down. The heavy recoil kit gives you a pinch in the shoulder, more than my standard AKM bolt. The metal butt plate tends to knock into your bones, so you're definitely going to feel it if you're just wearing a t-shirt. Less so if you're decked out in Russia's finest combat fatigues and armour. The hop up is pretty meh. Sure. Used exclusively on semi-auto with decent weight ammo, double blaster freeze to be exact, you can expect pretty decent groupings, however that accounts for 2% of my total usage of the RPK. It's an RPK, fully auto is where it's at. And with that in mind, personally, semi-auto is only there for when going into buildings is absolutely necessary, especially on an RPK. Fully auto gas blowback guns isn't the most consistent way to shoot. Dumping a whole magazine would inevitably cause the BBs to hit the floor far closer than when used on semi-auto. For this reason alone begs the question whether a gas and mag GBBR can make it as a standalone machine gun. I stuck to firing it in bursts. No longer than a seven shot brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
I reduced the BB weight to two fives. This enabled the range to maintain a consistent 60 to 70 meters, and as you see here at 50, it provides area suppression. I did drop back to 70 at an elevated position, but the BB spread was large enough to fit a bus into. I took it to a Milsom game, and as it was pretty chilly in the morning, I used my lighter AKM bolt, along with this one dual nozzle for sight regs. Unfortunately, I had problems with it the whole morning. The nozzle kept on jamming. One of the nozzle guide tabs worn off so much so that it put the nozzle just off center and caused stoppages. Dead man's click at the worst moment ever. I fixed it in the afternoon by removing them completely. The RPK did fine for the rest of the day, but I was a little let down by it to begin with. I followed through the fix by filing away these areas flat and filing out a small ramp on the hop-up chamber to reinforce positive chambering. Da, rifle is fine. So, about that Milsom game. I put the gas blowback machine gun theory into practice and brought it here, the Longmore Army Training Camp. Part of it is reminiscent of a quaint English village, and other features include buildings, houses, forward operating base, dense woodland, tunnels, a train track with carriages, and a couple of grounded helicopters. While the RPK falls at home most of the time, I was hindered by its overall length when room clearing, and of course, ammo capacity. Therefore, I mainly stayed outside so I can remain fully automatic. Sorry mate. So the minor faults I experienced were down to the nozzle, which is a common problem with the GHK AK series, and by far the easiest to resolve. I experienced this before a few years ago on my AKM, after performing the modifications, it was back, rock and roll. No GBBR isn't without its niggles, for sure, which can be said for any airsoft gun really. What you do get with the RPK along with its badassery, is a proven weapon system adored by many, also, including a whole host of upgrade and aftermarket potential. Sky's the limit, really. Or you could just leave it as is and keep blazing. I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. And if you did, why not show the love by hitting the like and subscribe? Any questions? Feel free to leave them down below. You can also check me out on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash pictures. And until next time, I'll catch you in a bit. So, have you been in a Hilo crash before? No, it's my first one actually. It's your first one. Well, you know when we were doing the pre-flight checks and I asked you to check that little red, flashing red button? Yes. And yeah. did you check it? No, no, I didn't check it, no. So that would was result in us coming down? I think it'll still go, you know. Not sure. Sorry. Where do all these come from? Just check in. Do they, if, if, you, if you hook those things back up, would, would, would it make it fly again? It could be a bit windy. Yeah, and there is an issue, there is no wind, though, when there is no glass. Well, but there's also, I'm missing How like, are we going to explain this to... Um, ISIS, we should leave. ISIS, mm. they shot the windows out, Stripped the bullets went metal. straight past, yeah. nearly took our... Yeah took our pilot's helmets off yeah and then killed the uh, the engine in the back that's how we we'll explain it yeah. yeah and then stripped it to parts we should run you should yeah before they get here yeah